What's going on, y'all? So let's What's going on, y'all? So we are back again for another episode review of Love and Hip Hop Miami, this season two, episode 10, Performance Anxiety, okay? So it picked up directly where it left off last week with Veronica um, Vega and, um, you know, JoJo going at each other. You know, she calling her a racist bitch, Veronica calling her a hoe and all this stuff, whatever the fuck. And I said, you know what? In this instance, I really don't like neither one of them, but I was on Veronica. <laughs> I was seeing Veronica in this because JoJo is just doing a fucking lot. All right. Um, what really turned me off from JoJo, really, really turned me off from JoJo is her in this root story. We'll get to that in a second. Um, Veronica had to tell Bobby, don't be trying to bring no bitch over here, especially this cabbage patch looking bitch. I said, bitch, that is what she looked like too. Oh my God. Let me stop for somebody say something about me. But uh anyway, um, so yeah, you know, she was like, girl, don't don't bring nobody over here trying to patch up shit. This ain't the time or the place. Bobby, you wanted to see something go down. You knew damn well. But whatever. So um Veronica leaves, they do the little cook off thing and chaotic loses. And he loses very, very bad. Okay. Shay pops up. Shay pops up. And she was like, What's up, Angry Bird? I said, wait a minute. Y'all ain't gonna let this bitch breathe. <laughs> they started fighting. She yanked off JoJo wig, and that was just it. And so, moving on from that, um, Amada, she's going over there talking to her mom. Her mom, remember, she had that um, offer to work with the Sugar Factory with her empanadas. And, you know, she decided after some time thinking about it to go ahead and take them up on the offer. Uh, her mother, you know, is her confidant, is her voice of reasoning. That's who she speaks to. That's when she needs some, um, you know, advice and some, you know, comfort or whatever. And so she was telling her about everything that was going down, the JoJo situation, the, um, you know, um, Bobby situation. And, you know, her mama said, JoJo, if she could talk about having your back, she was never really your friend. Um, that's your, that's her loss or whatever. And when it came down to the Bobby situation, she was like, I feel like Bobby jealous of your ass, okay? He jealous of your writing, everything that you're doing, the fame that you're getting, the fact that you're in the spot, all of that shit. And you know, come to think of it, it kind of makes sense. She out here doing what he wish he could, you know? And because she was like, she don't never, she can't think of anything bad that she did to him for him to come at her the way that he did and for all of this stuff to be going on. So I was like, maybe mama got a point, okay? Maybe mama's assessment of uh, Bobby is right. I don't know. Do y'all think that? Um, because I was confused when they fell out because I thought they was cool and it just came out of nowhere. But anyway, moving on from that. We get Cabbage Pack, Angry Bird, you know, JoJo laying in her bed and her feelings. Let me tell you something. I never noticed this until this episode. JoJo, why do y'all do this? This fake eyelashes, fake eyebrow craze got to go, okay? Now, if you're going to put some lashes on, why do they have to be so goddamn big to the point that your eye, your eyes are getting stuck together because they're too fucking heavy to lift up? In the confessional, go back and look, especially at the beginning when she was doing a scene, um, talking about the whole fight between her and Veronica. Just look, that eye, that eye was going like this. One of them eyes could not open up all the way. And I was just like, bitch, I can barely see your eyes because the lash is so damn big and so fucking heavy. But anyway, moving on from that, her mom comes over and I just feel like this is some bullshit. And I know that a lot of Caribbean people... And, um, you know, Spanish people, Latinas, Latinos, they, some of them do believe in the root stuff and whatever, but I just feel away about Jojo putting all this shit on this black woman, regardless of what you may think. Mata is a black woman, okay? Um, and black people coming off, okay? But I just feel some type of way that she is putting all this blame on this black woman uh, for her failures. She's up there talking to her mother about the fact that her and Amada are not friends no more. The mom was like, okay, whatever. She going to miss out on the friendship with you, whatever. And it felt like, you know, I don't know. It felt like Amada didn't put a ruse on me, ma. I know it may sound crazy, but, you know, I did the spiritual healing. And they said that, you know, at first I didn't want to believe it. But now that I see it, it's like I really feel like Amada put ruse on me. 
And she must have did it in my food or whatever because I used to go over there and I used to eat all the time with Amada. I'm pretty sure you did. I can tell. Okay, me too. Um, and I just don't understand why she would do that. Like, she'd be so hateful, and I thought she was really my friends. Like, mama, she really put Bruce on me. And I feel like the only way that I can get it out is I have to go through a spiritual ritual healing and all this shit. The mama was here for her for a second, but then when she started talking about the root shit, bitch, mama was like, huh? Huh? What? Mama wanted to laugh at one point. You had to go back and look at it. Mama really wanted to laugh, because she kind of went like, she was, she had to catch herself. And um, I'm sitting here like, are you serious? So you're going to really play this storyline out. And I hope she's really not. I hope it really is true that she is really not coming back next season because there is no, no, no use for her. You're really trying to play this storyline out and say, because you really have none, and say that this woman put roots on you and she is the reason why your business failed, your love life failed, and people are not me and your friend anymore and trying to fight you. You forgot about all the bullshit that you pulled last season. You forgot about the fact that maybe you let your personal get involved with your professional and that's why your business is faltering. Maybe because your daddy wasn't even here for the business idea because he knew that the shit was not going to work. Maybe if you would have listened to him and would have went about it a different way and did something a little bit more different in your business, maybe your business will still be here. Maybe if you would have did the research and understand that a lot of these businesses when it comes to clothing and restaurants and stuff like that, a lot of them fail in the beginning, okay? Okay? That happens. That don't mean that somebody put some fucking roots on you, bitch, okay? That means that you just... You're just not good as a businesswoman, or that idea was not just good, okay? It, the idea probably would have, it wasn't well executed. That's probably what it meant, okay? Let's not forget that you also was with somebody else's man. Well, I ain't even going to do that because Shay and them broke up, but y'all was cool. Y'all weren't really cool like that, so fuck that. Who cares? Pleasure P and you was not for real, okay? Who gives a shit about that, all right? Um, This whole people want to fight you, you and Shay had beef, okay? You and Veronica Ben had beef from last season, okay? These are why people don't fuck with you. You took up for somebody else as they were taking down a friend of yours, okay? Amada. You didn't stand up for her. So, of course, she's going to feel away. That was your fault, okay? That is your fault. Take accountability for your own shit instead of putting it off on somebody else. That's all I got to say on that. And stop with this bullshit. So, you got Young Hollywood in the studio with this um, reggaeton artist, Nail. And, um, Nejo or Nejo, whichever one, bitch, me. Okay, he there, no disrespect. And then Prince comes in there with Chaotic and, you know, he want to share some of his music because now he's going by Poppy Shampoo. Okay. Dude put the music on and I ain't going to lie, the beat was cute, but, you know, it's something I've heard before. Even the hook and everything. I ain't even finna hate on it, but, Okay. And then dude leaves and they start talking about this whole thing with Chaotic. He's still going to try to get a verse from, um, you know, Trick Daddy one way or another. I said, well, damn, Trick Daddy name still carry weight on songs and stuff like that. Still in 2019 that you, you know, you really, okay. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. but he starts speaking about how, um, the court or whatever, they sent him trying to get him to take a plea for that little incident that he had, um, you know, saying that they want to give him seven years, two years in the jail and five years probation. And then uh, Young Hollywood said, bitch, he ain't even say, y'all dog, that's kind of fucked up. What you going to do? Young Hollywood just said, well, we need to just go ahead and get these videos out just in case something happened. He's like, your dog ain't nothing going to happen. I said, you don't know that. So, I mean, I get what Hollywood was thinking, but hey, that's what it is. And then, um... You know, he started speaking about how his father reached out to him and how he declined the call. His father was a pastor. His father never was in his life like that. And it was like he probably saw what happened. And now he want to, um, you know, reach out to him. And he just don't know how he feel about that. And they was giving him, you know, some advice and saying, maybe you just need to go ahead and see what it's about. And um, even though he probably wasn't helping you out in your life, maybe his words can help other people and all this stuff. Whatever. Moving on from that. We got JoJo 
you know, I was just, like, in my own world, and I just don't understand what's going on. Like, I really thought Amada was my friend, but she really did put these roots on me. And mind you, the spiritual advisor did say a woman, but they never said a name or whatever. No way. It's just that goes to show that you hate a person so much that you would literally put out a false accusation on national TV like this without any fucking proof. Any proof. And then she like, and um, I tried like, it's so bad that the spiritual advisor don't even know how to help me. And I talked to my papi about it and he told me he got somebody in Mexico who can help me. So that's where I'm about to go tonight. Cause my business is faltering. My friendships is fucking up. I said, bitch, that's your fault. That is your fault. Okay, you got into it with Jesse Wu, bitch. I forgot all about her, but you got into it with Jesse Wu. You did that. You did that. You the one that threw the drink on her. That's your fucking fault. You all this stuff is your fault, okay? Like, come on. Anyway, moving on. I just don't care about her. I'm I'm really mad at this storyline. So it's Prince birthday, or should I say Poppy Shampoo, okay? Uh boy. <laughs> Okay, okay, whatever. Um, it is what it is. Listen, so he gonna do his little performance or whatever. You got everybody invited. Um, you know, everybody's having a good time. Chaotic is there. Young Hollywood is there. Um, Michelle Pooch come up there to Amada talking about some, you know, what's your dream guy and all this stuff. And I said, girl, quit trying to set her up with um Trick Daddy. Please, Amada, don't you dare do it. Don't you dare do it. She said, out of all the preppers in Miami, Trick is the only one that, no, girl. She tried to let it down easy and say that, you know, that's her people's or whatever. But she wanted to say, bitch, never on your life, okay? You know, um... Then Shay comes up there telling her about the whole thing with JoJo and, you know, letting it be known that, um, you know, uh, what's that girl name? Amada divorced her over JoJo. She really wanted to be her friends and all this stuff. And they made up, you know, if I was, if I was Shay, I would have let her sweat it out just a little bit longer, whatever. Cause bitch, you dumped me for this bitch, but okay. You know, it's cute. Let's not draw shit out. So I guess that's what it was. And it's good that, you know, Shay didn't take it to a negative place when they, um, you know, the way that it went down. Cause she could have went all the way negative and Amada could have been on her shit list, shit list, but that wasn't what it was. And you could tell that she really liked Amada and valued the friendship to a certain extent. And so they cool now. Um, Bobby Shampoo. Liz is over there. She cool. She was like, I know my boo boo can do all this, what he can do, and let his shit sign, you know, with outside of Bobby. Bobby was in the picture. He could never do this, but now that he's out, he's all to the good. And on the one hand, that's what it seemed like, okay? So, you know, we just know that Liz just never really saw for Bobby. But, um, <clears throat> Bobby Shampoo, Poppy Shampoo gets up there and he tried to do what he was trying to do, mind you. Okay, yeah, we'll get to that in a second. He gets up there, and he's thinking his, like, the magic of me. It's the magic of you. The magic of us. Visor on. Visor off. I'm sitting here like, now don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I did say I like it sound like I heard this shit before. Like we probably heard this shit before. Somebody else was thinking it. Different words, but if he's trying to go for the pop charts, I can kinda see it. Am I the only one? It gives me a little bit of the weekend type of feel when he did um you know, when he do his pop shit. You know, his commercial, whatever the fuck he was, a, I can't feel my face. Dad, it gave me a little bit of that for some reason. Like, I, I, okay, you know, he a little fake ass Lloyd. You know, it is what it is. Okay. Um, I'm just saying, bitch chaotic said, look at your braids. I think your braids just got a little bit longer, but either way, chaotic over there looking at Liz. And I said, he said, Prince so-called girlfriend Liz, she cute, she can get it. I said chaotic, kind of fuck down. I said, I guess this is the basis of how they get into it. Because remember on the preview, um, chaotic was about to be by, uh, Prince ass, okay? He jumped in the car and everything. Um, but moving on from that, you know, he's celebrating and all this shit. But 
the tension is thick according to them or according to Amada and them. Because Amada was made known by Michelle Pooch, who just randomly pops up, um, that, you know, uh, or, no, Shay told her. Shay was like, you know, uh, Veronica Davis, Vegas up in here. And it was like, for real, they haven't seen each other since they had their last fallout, okay? And so, she goes over there, and they was like, she was like, hey, hey, I mean, it's kind of awkward, you know, because last time, I know. And I was like, oh, bitch. Let's get this out. So, Amada and um, Veronica da uh I don't want to call her Veronica Davis. Veronica Vega. They they having this conversation. You know, they said, I know it was awkward. I don't know where to begin. But, you know, Veronica and... It was a grown woman conversation. It was a grown woman conversation. I will say that. There was no um, talking over each other. There was getting our feelings out. Even if you didn't want to hear what I had to say, I'm going to listen and let's just bump this bullshit, okay? Listen, I was never, the intention was never to be like, um, to, you know, come at you. I, I, I thought we connected because we shared similar stories and, you know, we was, you know, had similar things happen to us. And then, you know, the whole thing coming out about, you know, me, um, the young Hollywood thing. And then, uh, the whole thing coming out saying that I'm racist and it messed up my career. And, you know, I went to certain radio stations two years ago. I can't come there now because people saying that I'm racist. And, you know, you never said that I wasn't and all this stuff. She was like, but did I ever say that you was racist? Did that ever come out of my mouth? She was like, you never not said that I wasn't. And you as my friend, she was like, no, 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 boo-boo. We were not friends at that point. And see, that's what got it at that. You know, you can't expect somebody to come out and defend you when y'all got into it. And you already called her out her name and all this stuff and call her extensions and calling her bitches and stuff. And then you get in your feelings because... Oh, she didn't come out and say that I wasn't a racist or whatever the fuck. People got on you and people, it, 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 it's, it's not a modest place. And that's exactly what she said. You have to take accountability for your own actions. You should have known. You should have known that the majority of people who watches Love and Hip Hop are African American people. Black people, okay? And the majority of those black people do not like it with other people that are not black or that are not visually black you could have some type of black in you and we just don't know it but because of your skin tone we're gonna take offense because we don't know that you got a little bit of black up in you and so therefore they're gonna take offense when they hear certain words that you shouldn't be that they think or feel that we feel you shouldn't be saying okay it's not a matter of fault that people make up their own minds okay and don't like to see or hear other people that are visually black Say that shit. Say nigga and stuff like that. And that's what happened to you. And that's what, um, you know, Amada was trying to say. You have to take accountability for your own self. But at the end of that conversation, they just said, let it go. And let's just move forward. And they hugged it out. And I was like, look at this shit. She Jojo, that's how you fucking talk to somebody, bitch. Okay? Anyway, speaking of this bitch, Bobby comes up in there. And this is another bitch that I can't stand, okay? Because you're also, you're also putting in, no, I think, was it Bobby who put it in his head and her head that this was really some real shit? Listen, you know what? At the reunion, when it comes on, I really hope that they go in not only on JoJo on this Bruce shit, but also Bobby. Because once again, you're doing this shit on public TV, national TV, and you're trying to falsify and fuck up somebody's character when the evidence shows all the shit that you have done. And you're not taking accountability for any of it, but you're blaming other people, okay? Let's not forget she tried to blame Amada for the whole shit that happened between her and Bobby and Prince. Bitch, you were talking about Prince to Bobby. Okay, you was talking about Bobby to Prince. That is your fault. All right. And then I went down to Mexico to get the rules taken off. And they did this whole little thing. And it was like scary, man. And I just, you know, I still got love for Amada. But that's just it. You know, karma going to have its way to come around to her. I'm good. I got the dark cloud off of me. I said, girl, you can't even open up your fucking eyes. Shut the fuck up. <clears throat> Child Amada. Girl Amara. Listen. Leave Trick Daddy alone. Don't do nothing for <laughs> that nigga. That nigga is no good. Listen, you don't want to end up like Joy, okay? Don't don't step over that boundary, alright? She go out there, he's taking her horseback riding. Of course she got her mama, that's okay, nothing happened, or whatever. 
Boo boo. She said horseback riding. What did you expect? Why you ain't put no bra on? Bitch, you knew what you was doing. But um, you know, her titties hurt, his nuts hurt. Hey, they was all in the same good place. Then they get off the horse and you know they start talking about the whole um cookout thing and why she didn't show up. And he said it was good and bad, you know, and um the bad you got JoJo and Veronica getting into it, and I'm pretty sure Bobby was in the middle. Now when people don't even people automatically don't know the situation that's going on between another person and the same person keeps coming up in the betwixt. Then we have a problem. It didn't take much for um Trick to put two and two together to know that Bobby was in the midst of all this shit. I said that don't make no sense, and that's not that's not a good look. Okay, moving on from that. You know, he was like, you just gotta let it go. She said, this bitch talking about something, I put some voodoo on her. Bitch, you ain't that important for me to do no voodoo. And I said, thank you. Amada is successful. The girl, compared to everybody else on this cast, she is the breakout star. Okay? She is the breakout reality star of this season. You just heard Michelle Pooh say, hey girl, I just sent you on the People Magazine and all this stuff. Girl... Who else are we talking about in the national um, news and stuff? Amada. We're not talking about no JoJo. JoJo, you would never be up there. It's because you have a hateful spirit on you. You need to change yourself instead of worry about somebody else. But anyway, you know, Trick basically said, I got your back. Fuck them. Okay. Moving on from that, we get this scene with, um, you know, chaotic key outside at the park. And I said, oh, somebody got some kids. Well, what's happening? Um, Chaotic sitting out there waiting on his daddy to show up. And his daddy started coming up. And when he do, they sit down. He was like, you know, I seen what happened to you on the news and talking about you fleed away from the scene and stuff. Bitch, when he said flee, I put my subtitles back up on my TV. I said, let me rewind this and see did he really say that. Bitch, they had in quotation mark F-L-E-E-D. I said, what is it about Miami? First you got old girl from um City Girl saying flewed out. Now we fleed in the set. We fleed in the scene, bitch. Okay, you know, it is what it is. Vernacularism and all that shit. Um, but basically he was just giving his side and saying how, you know, um, he knew that he he got shot in the back of the head. He died at one point. He came back. Um, you know, they revived him and he could have did better. He could have fought harder. You know, um, when he left, he knew about this part where, um, uh, Chaotic went down the middle of the street, was talking about he gonna kill himself. And Chaotic said he remembered that because he was like, without you, it was like, what am I doing here? And all this stuff. And I said, damn. And people need to understand how this should be affecting these kids or whatever without you being in their lives and stuff, you know. And um, at one point, chaotic, you know, the daddy was talking about when he got shot and how when he went into the bathroom, he got down on his knees and he was crying. And chaotic was like, you know, it's been many a times that I cried. I cried at jail cells, cried in a fine apartment. I'm up in a band apartment and I'm thinking about you and how come I can't have a relationship that I need to with you and all this stuff and he just started breaking down crying I was just like oh my god oh my god Ugh, y'all know how I feel when um people start crying especially black men I be sitting here like because you know everybody want to be so tough and macho and shit let them feelings out bitch <laughs> So, Chaotic was just crying about the fact that, you know, he never got a chance to know his dad. His dad was not there for him. And his dad wasn't trying to deny it. His dad was like, you know, I'm here to, you know, own up to my shit. And then you hear and learn about me and me learn about you. And just know that I always believe in you and I always love you. And, you know, at this point, Chaotic was like, that's cool, man. Um, He has no hatred in his heart for him and you know he can see them getting along and coming back together and um just being cool and getting to know one another so it ended on a good note and chaotic gave him a football and all this stuff so they go play catch i was like oh <laughs> but y'all tell me how y'all felt about this episode and i'll see y'all later peace <laughs>